Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. So this week I have already read some books so I'm going to quickly tell you about what I have already read. One um, which is a book that I got in. So this was a book that I pre-ordered because I have the others in the series. My favourite being the, I think it's The Magic of Mushrooms. Five star book for me, beautiful. I kept that one in my collection. This one has probably been my least favourite instalment. Um, it says it's The Witch's Forest, Trees in Magic, Folklore and Traditional Remedies. However, it was very heavy on the folklore aspect. So it was a lot about folklore, a lot about historical uses of these trees, not really anything about witches, to be honest with you. Um, a lot about fairy tales, uh, not so much about remedies and current day uses. So it wasn't what I was hoping it would be. Um, and the illustrations were okay, but very basic. So compared to the other ones, this one is my least favorite and I, I won't be holding on to this edition. So that was that one. I also read Bitterthorn. So Bitterthorn is a sapphic sort of gothic fairy tale kind of book and it's situated in a village in Germany and you have a woman who is the daughter of a duke who her mother died and he remarried and she now has three stepsisters and she just pretty much feels invisible. She feels like that she she feels as though she's been forgotten and that nobody really wants her around and it's quite apparent that nobody wants her around. She's kind of superfluous and in this world there is a witch who every 50 years comes to collect a companion, a male companion from the village and they go off and they're never seen or heard from again. And uh, the witch comes and she decides that she's going to offer herself. So she goes along with the witch and the witch ignores her. So this is meant to be a romance, but I, would, I was not rooting for the romance. It was quite toxic. I did not feel the bond between the two women whatsoever. Um, so that wasn't for me. And that's why I've given the book a three stars. Like it was okay, but the, the romance just didn't cut it for me. I didn't really want them together. I was actually rooting for her to run away and not participate in the goings on, but she has to. So this also has a lot to do with time loops. Uh, there are spindles involved. It's a little bit confusing. I always find books that involve the manipulation of time hit or miss because sometimes if you look too closely, there's too many plot holes and it doesn't, it doesn't line up. Um, but in this one, it was okay. I did push through because I wanted to know what was going on because from the beginning you're like, something's happening. What's this witch hiding? So the whole thing is like, what is this witch hiding? What is going, what's happened to all of these companions that have come here and then disappeared and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, I didn't really like any of the characters at all in this book and none of them were likable. And even the main character, she was just so desperately lonely. And I was like, girl, <laughs> you need some therapy. You need to be okay in your own company. You're not constantly wanting someone else's love and attention and then finding it in toxic ways. You know, like stand on your own two feet, be cool with yourself. I understand it sucks that no one likes you. No one wants you around. But yeah, I don't know. It was, like I said, I gave it three stars, but I, it was not what I was hoping for. It is very cozy. It's a cozy read, I guess. It's not It's not one that I would really recommend, so to speak. So those are the two books I've already read this week. So this week I saw a video by Books and Lala. Oh, I never remember the names of channels, but I'll, I'll put it up in the cards where she grabs books, she reads them, she, and then she tries to guess what they're rated on Goodreads. Now she went full on scientific with her hypotheses of what it could possibly be rated. I will not be doing that. I will just be going off of gut instinct, I guess. So I thought I would do that this week. I've got so many books at the library that I need to pick up. So I'm going to grab those and I will read them, give my review and rating, and then guess what it could have been rated on Goodreads. And I've just told myself if I get two of them right within a point, say if I say 3.5 and it's 3.6 or 3.4, that's a win for me. Um, I'm going to allow myself to buy a book, which I almost never do. I buy a book that I have not read and I don't know if, if I'll like it or not. So I thought, we'll see how we go. So that's just a bit of fun, a bit of something extra to do. But like I said, I've got so many books at the library, so I'll probably be going from those. I'm currently listening to an audiobook. Uh, it's, I think it's the first in the Bridgerton series, and I always need an audiobook on the go because I like to have it on while I'm crocheting. 
that's my favorite way to crochet because in that way I can just keep my eyes on my craft um, or if I go for walks. So I'm listening to that. And on my e-reader, I've already forgotten what it is that I'm reading, but I will put it up here, what I'm reading on my Kobo because that's what I take when I go out to places. I don't take physical books out and about. And then, but all the other books will be from the library. So we'll see how I go, what my readings will be and whether or not I can predict what Goodreads rates. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I think pretty much Goodreads will always rate books higher <laughs> than me. I'm a very, I don't say I'm a harsh rater. It's just, I don't like a lot of stuff. I think I tend to rate very heavily at three, like the very middle of the road. Like this is okay. It's not bad, but I didn't really love it. So that tends to be my base rating for almost everything. So I think I'll do well to rate higher for Goodreads than I have rated it myself. But I will touch base with you when I've got my library haul. Hello, hello, I'm back from the cafe. So I went to a really lovely cafe today. It was called Prior and it was very spacious. It was nice. Definitely one I'll go back to in that suburb. Sylvie, don't bite me. I also went to the library. So let me show you what I've got. So first up, we have Women of Myth from Dear Woman, Mama Wata to Amaterasu and Athena. So that's that one. I just saw on the shelf and grabbed it. Here we have Brutes or Brute. I'm not sure how you pronounce this one. I've seen this on YouTube before and that's why it grabbed my attention. The Bandit Queens. So I have been waiting so long for this one to come in. It's been very popular. I've heard a lot of good things about this one. So I will be starting with this one first out the gate and we'll see what I think of it. Debate your cosmic DNA. <laughs> I don't know what it's about. But it caught my attention. It's a very thin, slim read, so we'll see. It might be a book I just put down after one chapter, but who knows? Okay, then we have Audition by Pip Adam. So this one is one of the books that caught my attention based on its cover when I did that vlog, but it wasn't available at the library. Still wanted to read it though to see is it as interesting and intriguing as this cover is? So we'll see what that's about. This is called After the Rain. Um, I saw this in a bookstore and so I reserved it in my library. I don't know what it's about. A lot of these I don't know what they're about and I'm guessing a lot of them are contemporary. I find that most of the covers I like are contemporary novel covers. And then we've got Understanding Modern Spirituality. So once again, book based on the cover and title, but those are the books that I picked up from the library. So like I said, I will be starting with The Bandit Queens. Uh, I also completed my Goodreads reading challenge. So I set it to 350 books and I have hit that mark. But that also includes all my DNFs that I didn't read in totality. So I've completed the challenge and uh, yay, yay for me, I guess. Be careful. Be very careful. Be very careful. Good morning. Good morning, there's Nova. I have already read three books since yesterday. I just uh, decided to read, 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 and that's what I've done. So uh, let's have a look. Let's see how we're going. So I'm going to start with the audiobook because of Miss Bridgerton. So what do I give this? I am rating this a three. It was pretty average for me. It was just a historical romance between two childhood I won't say friends, they've known each other since they were children, but they had a very antagonistic relationship with each other. 
And then one day she injures her ankle trying to save a cat from a tree and has fallen on the roof of a building and he has to come rescue her. And after that, they sort of start to form an attraction with one another. It's a very slow burn. Nothing happens until literally the last chapter of the novel. But honestly, there just wasn't much to it. I didn't, it was okay. It was very basic. So I have given that three. So let's see what it actually got. So for Goodreads, I'm going to say this is a, I think people would eat this stuff up. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with 3.6. So let's see what people rated it. What is the average? 3.9. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. That's some, um, I, I think I'll have to bump it up even further with the next two. 3.9. So I did not get that one right. Yeah. Okay. So that was that book. Then I read The Bandit Queens. So it's a cute cover. I also like the cover. Uh, this is sort of to do with the legend of the bandit queen, Fulan Devi, I think her name was, who had like brutal things happen to her and ended up getting vengeance and justice on all of those people who wronged her. And I think she ended up being involved in politics as well. She formed her own gangs. And in this story, you have Gita, whose husband has left and people think she's killed him. So then the other women in her micro loan group come and ask for her help in knocking off their husbands who are all very uh, abusive and absolute pieces of shit. So she ends up getting wrapped up in this sort of thing. I don't want to spoil anything at all, but it involves a lot of obviously friendships. It involves independence. Uh, it involves standing up against abusive men in their life and just really coming into your own as an independent woman <laughs> so i i enjoyed it i think i'm going to rate this four stars it was easy to read it was look there are some brutal things in there this does include the sexual assault of children this does include some animal cruelty so be forewarned but overall i did enjoy my time with it uh it played out in a way that was look it did start to feel very soap opera-y towards the end. It felt like a soap opera. So it became a bit like over the top, but I didn't mind it, you know? So I would be rating this four. Ah, I think, I know that this is popular because I've seen so many people talking about it. What would Goodreads rate it? I'm going to go with four and a half stars. So let's see, am I correct? <laughs> I honestly have no idea, guys. Uh, Bandit Queen, let's find Bandit Queen. It was so hard to not also check in with Goodreads. Normally when I'm reading a book, I like to just pop in, refresh my memory about what the actual plot of the book is sometimes. I haven't got it on my to-reads list. Okay, so I have to search it. And if I'm maybe not liking certain aspects, I like to see did other people feel the same way. So it's been very hard to not go on my Goodreads whatsoever. The Band of Queens. Here we go. What did it get? 3.95. Wow. Okay. Less. Less. So I rated it 0.6 higher than the Goodreads score. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. People didn't like this one as much. So another miss. <laughs> another miss. Totally did not. Totally did not get that one at all. Uh, the next book I read is called One Puzzling Afternoon. So in this book, you have Edie. So it's set in two time periods back when Edie was a teenager and she was friends with a girl named Lucy. And then flash forwarding to the present day Edie, who's 85 and battling with dementia. So this book is revolving around the mystery of the disappearance of her friend Lucy. And in this book, modern day Edie is saying that she needs to remember. She needs to help Lucy by remembering something that she kept secret. So I liked the writing, uh, even though it's back and forth in time, which is not generally one of my favorite storytelling techniques. I didn't mind it this way. Edie herself is a very quiet person. It was hard to read the chapters with her battling with the dementia in which she would forget and she would lash out at everyone treating her like she can't remember anything. I had three grandparents. So my great grandmother and two of my grandmothers um, all have dementia. So I am very familiar with it. Uh, it is heartbreaking. It is, I can't imagine how much worse it is to be the person who actually 
has dementia, I think they encapsulated that really well with her frustrations and how it affects her relationships with the people that she loves and those around her and how it slowly eats away at her own autonomy. So I absolutely loved those parts. The ones where she was back in the past with Lucy, there's a lot of drama. So there is a lot of um, things that were happening with Lucy and <laughs> my cats. And Lucy's disappearance is solved at the end of the novel. Uh, I enjoyed it. I also liked the the way it showcased also the relationship and the dynamics between her and her mother. I thought her mother was quite a fleshed out character, uh, very lively compared to Edie, who's like I said, very quiet, very reserved, very internalized. And overall, I enjoyed it. There were some, I'm guessing, a, there was a little bit of magical realism in this. There were some like paranormal aspects, but it's not a lot. I actually enjoyed it. It was a very quiet mystery there was some sadness to it because of the dementia aspect and with what happened with lucy it was sad i want to say this is not a happy ending <laughs> book so if you need happy endings probably don't read this one but i enjoyed my time with it and i'm rating it what am i rating it i'd say 3.75 it was a solid read but i wouldn't say it was a four but it was a 3.75 so what do i think this got Oh, this is so hard. Uh, I want to feel like it's a 3.75, but um, I'll bump it up to oh, 3.9. Okay, I'm going to say 3.9. <laughs> I have absolutely zero confidence in my predictions because thus far I have been quite wrong. All right, so one puzzling afternoon, 3.9. It is a... 4.2 <laughs> okay so close if it had been a four i would have gone it but no i look that's probably ah oh, damn it <laughs> 4.2 i i can see why people would like it a lot it is a yeah so that's another one i don't think i'm going to get any of these guys <laughs> not a single not a single correct uh hypothesis on what goodreads rate stuff but okay the next book that i'm going to pick up and read is Brutes, that's that's what I'm calling it. I don't know if that's what it is, but Brutes, I'm going to read that one. And on Goodreads, not on Goodreads, and for my next audiobook, I've got a book called But the Girl. No clue what this book is about, and now I can't find out what it's about because I can't go on Goodreads, but the cover caught my attention. It's pink and green. As we know, pink and green, for some reason, just really grabs my eyes. So I saw it and I reserved it. Um, so we'll see how I go with these next two books. Maybe I'll actually be able to predict a good read score. Probably not. Probably not. But, uh, so far I've had, um, a good, good run. A three, a 3.7 and a four. That's pretty decent. So let's continue. Hello guys, so let's look at the last books I read and see how I went. So, I was reading Brutes. Okay, <laughs> I ended up DNFing this after 53 pages. I just could not push myself to read it. I did not like the style of writing. So in this book, you have a group of teenage girls and then a girl in their town goes missing. And do they know what happened to her? It was just not for me the the writing was just so confusing i guess it was trying to be like in the mind of a teenage girl but it was just very irritating to read it was so convoluted and obscure that i just didn't know what was going on in this book whatsoever it was way too hard to get into it was incredibly slow paced and like i said the writing style itself was very confusing and I did not enjoy it, so I decided to DNF it. I did end up skipping to the end to like uncover the mystery, and I was just like, what the fuck? I'm still left confused, <laughs> I still don't understand this book. So for me, that's a DNF, because I really didn't like it. So if I was gonna rate it, it would be probably a one star. So that would be my rating, 
one star. What do I think other people rated this? I, I honestly think that because of the style, not many people will like it. I think this book was very eye-catching in its cover. It is stunning, but I don't think, I can't see how a lot of people would enjoy this. So I'm going to say 3.4 is the Goodreads rating. So let's see if I was right. 3.2, <laughs> God damn it, I was so close. I was so close, but yeah, man. Yeah, uh, I think that's, a fair rating. Um, I obviously, like I said, would have rated it a one, but yeah, three point two. So I was so close on that one. Point one away. Maybe I should have given myself a bit more leeway, but yeah, I'd. Uh, yeah, no, that book was not for me. It was just so not my style. Okay, and now we've got but the girl. So once again, the cover stunning. I love the cover. Okay, this book is about an artist who has Malaysian immigrant pa immigrant parents. She lives in Australia. At the beginning of the book, it's a lot about her home life being raised in, I guess, a very traditional immigrant family style in which, you know, kids are hit and yelled at. So you could say that it's an abusive childhood. And then she ends up getting a grant or a residency uh, or an artist's res residency in the UK, I believe. But she also goes to Scotland as well. So they're sort of paid to be there and they live in a house with all these other artists and they work on their craft. The main character herself is a bit of a people pleaser who doesn't really speak up for herself and then sort of right at the end of the book she sort of, you know, has a bit of a speech in front of everybody and changes that. But this book, okay, I, I didn't really enjoy it. I've given it a three stars. Uh, the character, I just felt like this character was really just a soapbox for the author. She was just a puppet for the author to have her say about random shit. And it reminded me in that way of yellow face where it's just, you you have to sit there and think, mm, is this really a fictional piece or is this you? Is this you saying things that you want to say just through a character? So because of that, like the character and her story just don't feel authentic. It just feels like this is the author talking about her life, perhaps. Um, like a lot of her thoughts and speeches about certain topics just felt forced in it didn't feel very organic to the actual story and there was some i guess she just talks about anything and everything and yeah i guess you could try and say this is supposed to be like a feminist novel but i just i don't know man i just once again it's like write an autobiography or write an actual really really fictional piece where it doesn't feel like i'm just listening to you and your thoughts and opinions so it wasn't for me just like i didn't really enjoy yellow face either i guess it's meta i don't know but this wasn't for me, so I've given it three stars. Like, it's okay, it's not bad, but I just really didn't see the point in reading it. I didn't really take anything away from it. I didn't find the story itself super entertaining. Um, and like I said, it was just it just had very blurred lines between fiction and autobiography. So that's my rating for that, three stars. Uh, because this is an Australian author, I feel like they're just not as popular on Goodreads. I don't think perhaps it's gotten much traction because it's also quite a new release. So I'm going to say, I've given it a three. I'm going to say 3.3. .3. Okay, so let's see what this book got. Four. That's high, but it's only had 43 ratings. So I feel like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Maybe other people really just did take it as a fictional piece and didn't feel the kind of double exposure kind of thing that I was thinking of because even in the in the book there's a an artist who does a portrait of the main character and she's laid it on top of like another image and it's coming through so I feel like this is the same thing where it's a character but she's laid upon the author and the author's opinions <sighs> okay way off on that one <laughs> just way off but like I said it's 43 ratings isn't a lot but okay four points so yeah I um I suck <laughs> Goodreads uh, opinions. I do tend to rate lower than Goodreads does besides the Bandit Queens. That was the only instance I rated higher, but it was 0.4 higher than Goodreads. Otherwise, generally I do tend to I do tend to rate lower. I'm a harsher rater, I guess, than the majority of the opinion and the average ratings. But uh, yeah, that was that was actually fun. <laughs> I just wanted to see how wide, widely, you know, skewed my ratings, my guesses, and the actual average ratings were. So that was a bit of fun. But that's everything for this week. And until next time, stay wild, star child.